spectacular valley, isn't it? This is the Grebe, the Grebe Valley, the home of the Crested Grebe. Very few, if any, remain in, uh, in the wild and fjordland now. But it's not the Grebe we're after. We're after the mighty Red Stag. And there's very few of those about here at the moment too. Almost an endangered species. But uh, it's a beautiful day. It's calm for a change and it's very cool. So we'll do some wild exploring and see what we come across. But we will keep our eye open for the crested grebe. We'd heard there was potential in the area for some better antler growth. So father decided to take the rifle for a walk in case the opportunity arose for a decent head and a bit of fresh meat. Sort of see a game trail running through this great country. Sort of low country, swampy, little bit of swamp. But you see little game, old game trails and the odd mark through here. Quite interesting, quite a lot of mud splattered on all the foliage. Back in the 60s and 70s there were large numbers of deer roam in these hills and when you read some of the old stories you realise they must have seen some incredible sights back then. It's a different story today though, after 30 odd years of hard out commercial and recreational hunting, numbers are only a fraction of what they used to be. With the use of helicopters on the scene and so much open tops and wide river flats, deer can be knocked down to low levels really fast, so often you have to cover a fair bit of country on foot before hearing a roar. But when you do, it makes it all worthwhile. One of the obstacles of Fiordland. Here we are, we've tramped across some nice low country in there. We've got a chain, don't like to interrupt, chainsaw stag going up there, and then we hit a water hazard. Um, personally, I like to look for a log, but I think it has to be one of the world's longest logs to climb across if there's going to be one here. I think we might be getting wet feet. <laughs> so, whole carcass might get wet, I think. Yeah, give blow. It's quite late in the morning, so um, you, you, you don't know whether you, there's any chance of wearing him out, but you've got to give it a try, don't you? And it sounds as like if he's actually getting a bit lower.
These sand flies are just murder. I, I, I can see him. I can see his antlers. This is the sort of thing you dream about, having a master stag come out in the open in broad daylight. You always hope it'll happen, but it seldom ever does. They'll usually stick to the safer confines of the bush during daylight hours, especially in areas of high hunting pressure. Unfortunately the river was slow moving and deep along this stretch, with quite a steep bank on the far side, and the stag didn't seem to want to cross it at this point. He's probably heading upstream to where he knows there's a suitable crossing place. It's a shame there wasn't an easy way across, because he'd have no doubt come straight over. Shoot him now if you want, father. Hey, shoot him now.